I'm Despin. I'm Doc. And I'm banned from Swotor. And this is The Breakdown, and we're going to break down a bomber match today, and we have a special guest, Dak is with us, because I don't fly bomber, and I wanted someone who actually knew what they were doing to step in with a, a good match for us to take a look at. I only pretend to know what I'm doing, really. So we're not going to be getting any learning material out of this video? Uh, no, no, nothing at all. Alright, good. Anybody uh, watching, you can cut off the video now and unsubscribe. <laughs> So just at first glance, it looks like um, it looks like you were intending, I think, to start in a scout, and then um, you kind of mouse over uh, your team's composition and say, uh, maybe I should swap. Uh, honestly, I probably would have gone bomber. I just have scout in the first position as a leftover from the days where I did play a lot of scout all the time. In fact. Yeah, and there comes the uh, last second decision. You actually don't have any eye, any eye on support at all. Uh, the other team has kind of sort of a more balanced comp. Uh, your team is running three strike fighters, unfortunately. And yes, I'm going to be pointing out the number of strike fighters in every breakdown video. I mean, because you Because it's a psychotic hatred of mine. Pretty typical standard approach to B. You've got to uh, drop off your beacon there, uh, right outside the tunnel, so that just in case anybody dies, they can quickly uh, head back to B. B is usually where most of the activity occurs on this map anyway. A lot of times, a lot of domination matches in, in particular, but this one, people grab the off nodes and then B, considering how cloistered away from the rest of the map is, encased inside this little rock, uh, I don't know what you would call it, silo, well, whatever it is. It's a lot of close quarters combat, and uh, it's a bomber in this in this match is very crucial on B. It's hard to hit B in a gunship. Yeah, typically, I, I always choose the uh, Type 2 Scout on this map if I can. Here's a nice approach, so you use the topology of the map, this little generator here, to shield you from uh, any uh, incoming railgun fire. Yeah, I do get hit with one, but it's it's a low charge shot. At this point, as you uh, approach the node, you've got charge plating up, enabling you to clear out all the mines by face tanking them. I try to bounce to hit the turret, but mess it up. Which is fine, because you're not taking any hull damage, really, which is the power of charge plating. Especially with no ion support, uh, you have to clear out those mines somehow, so popping charge plating as you get to the node uh, is a great way to clear out all the mines and not really suffer any damage. Yeah, had the other bomber on the node here actually been trying to kill me rather than just run from me, I think he could have done it, because I started interdicted and then stayed interdicted for most of the time I was there. Yeah. All's well that ends well. And you do have Hydra Spanner to help out with any sort of uh, minor hull damage. It's probably one of the few circumstances when Hydra Spanner is a fairly decent play. Because there are no truly uh, great uh, co-pilot choices for bombers, that also means that there are tr no truly bad ones. You're doing a pretty good job here of uh, maintaining LOS during the 11-second uh, uh, window that charge plating isn't up. I held charge plating until I knew he would be able to drop a mine again, because there was no point in hitting it and wasting that three seconds or whatever. Mm -hmm. Watching this now, I didn't realize this at the time, but um, I usually run interdiction on my seismic mines as well, right? Just because double interdiction is really helpful. I have the bug where upgrades are getting deselected, so I have no upgrades on my seismic mines on this match. And, and we still don't know what the uh, what what actually causes it. You see uh, the blue charge of an ion gunship in the distance, not shooting at you though. Looking at Simac. Simac, I think, is in a battle scout this game, so that's kind of understandable. Gunship being afraid of the scout. In that situation, if I'm the gunship, I try to ignore the scout as long as I possibly can so that I can put more fire on the bomber and on the node. Assuming that my team will be coming to deal with the bomber and the stuff, I want to clear that stuff out from the node, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Good use of strafing here. Uh, to maintain LOS and not worrying too much about, uh, since you have charge plating anyway, uh, you don't have to worry too much about bumping off parts of the satellite. I did successfully bounce to turn around a moment ago there. What I'm doing right here is trying to, they've got at least one gunship over there, two I think, and I'm trying not to stay in their line of sight for very long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're seeing the blue aura of the uh, Type 1 gunship right there. There are literally four enemies right in front of you and none of them were actually looking or firing at you. Yeah, that gunship, as soon as I poke my head around the satellite, that gunship should have had me. Mm -hmm. He should have been waiting for that. But you take advantage of it, and that's uh, that's one thing uh, to note is, uh, as a bomber pilot, keeping an active shot. I mean, you, you, do, you have blasters for a reason. 
that replaced her hyperspace beacon. This time at C, which is a nice play. Uh, a big part of bomber play is watching buff and debuff trays more so than the other ships. Uh, in this case, managing your cooldowns uh, for your beacon so that once it goes away, you can quickly replace it. Following the bomber here to try to keep shooting him because I need to get him off the node. And here, here's, unfortunately, a bomber chases down the beacon and uh, managed to, manages to kill it. But he got off the node to do so, and because he did, we actually capped the point here yep. in just a second. I get interdicted, or I might have been able to save the beacon. Yeah, this is this is where uh, active... Uh, uh, I hesitate to use the word aggressive, but active bomber play can... Uh, could be very very helpful because what happens is you end up uh, being wherever the action is so that when you do have to replace a hyperspace beacon you're replacing it at the point where most of the combat is occurring so like by the time you had to replace your beacon at sea most of the combat was at sea so that anybody who died as a result of said combat could instantly get back into the fray Is that a concussion missile light right there? I think it was. Mm -hmm. Charge plating isn't up, so I can't tank those shots. But I don't mm -hmm. think I was paying close attention to that. I'm following the bomber instead. Yeah. You're doing a pretty good job in, in spite of having pretty low health and not a, much in the way of support. Doing a pretty good job staying alive here. It's also important to note that I am staggering my mines right here. Just that way that the other bomber's mines don't destroy both of them at once. Yeah, that's a big skill that um, bomber pilots need to learn, is to not drop both of your mines at the same time. I make a mistake right here, and I should have circled the satellite to break line of sight, and I didn't do it. Their whole team is pretty much at sea at this point. That ends up working out in our favor. So you make a kind of a crucial decision here to uh, abandon C to its fate and head over to A. I assume you noticed the giant cluster of red around C and figured there probably yeah. wasn't a whole lot of opposition at A. Uh, seven of eight there. Yeah. So yeah, that was an easy decision. On my approach at A here, uh, you, you get to see this in just a moment, I hang back because I'm out of engine power right here and I recognize that I am. So I drop my beacon, then wait for my engines to recharge while I'm still not in visual range of the scout on the satellite. And he picked the wrong moment to briefly leave the node. I guess there was somebody up there that he, he took out, and that's right when you swooped in there. It appears that scout is running burst cluster. And self-destructs, which is a great stroke of luck for you, yeah. because it allows you to capture the node with impunity. A big part of GSF is learning to count to 8, or 12. So if you see a lot of people in one area, that means there aren't many people in the other areas. So if you die, it, sometimes it's best to just say, okay, if, if they want C so badly, they can take it. I'll go get A while they're busy. And actually, as I circled the satellite right there, you could see all seven of them still over there. Mm -hmm. There's one moving to be right now. Yeah. This is where the experience comes in, because it's quite obvious that now that you have A and B, and they're all at C, the next attack logically will come to B, because that's the closest enemy node to them. I just left A undefended, so if you were wanting to try to counter that, A is where you should be going. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you were generally keeping an eye, too, on the status of A with the number of uh, turrets it had up and whether it's flashing or not. So if you saw things going pretty badly over there, you could always hop back over. Yeah, I'm watching the minimap too. That's why, I, in yeah. fact, I have the minimap so large, that way it's really easy to see just at a glance. Part of being a good bomber pilot is keeping your eyes on many different things at the same time. Whether it's the scoreboard, so you know when turrets are being stripped from enemies, uh, cooldowns to stagger your mines, and the minimap. And not a lot going on here. There's still far too many of them at sea, considering we're not really actively attacking sea anymore. They were attacking sea. You went for a, ba for a, uh, a backside capture. Uh, to get A while they were all at C, and they just didn't react quickly enough. What I should be doing right now, but decide not to, is replace my hyperspace beacon. It's still got a few seconds left on it, but the cooldowns got up, mm -hmm. so I could. Well, at this point, it's kind of understandable because B is starting to be attacked at the moment, and you're the only uh, Type 1 bomber uh, on your team. 
So I can understand why uh, you you might be yeah. hesitant to uh, leave the node to drop a new beacon. That's actually one place where, where uh, voice communication can be very, very helpful. You can just tell someone, hey, I need to leave the node just for a few seconds so I can replenish our beacon. Is anybody on the node right now? If you're in voice, if you're in uh, voice over IP, um, someone can tell you, yes, I'm on the node right now. Leave or no, no one's on the node yet, so don't. I've been watching this whole time uh, since you moved back to B. They haven't even sent anyone over to look at A. You know, somebody could have done basically what you did and essentially taken a free satellite for themselves if they just bothered to send someone over to take a look at A. Oh boy. <laughs> gotta, gotta wait for this to finish out before we have any further observations. And this is what happens when you fail to bounce. Yeah, if any of you want to uh, go to the bathroom and come back. <laughs> it's not gonna kill me because I have charge plating up, but yeah, I'm not going anywhere either. Yeah, if anybody wanted to know how powerful charge plating is, there you go. Your seismic mine got Uriel. Uriel had a uh, a snare applied to him at the moment. If you can get that, if you can get that interdiction snare applied to a, to a uh, scout that's chasing you around the node, that's very very crucial. That's that's almost like the one determining factor as to whether or not you're going to survive an encounter with a scout on a node. I don't think I get a chance to do it here, but something you can do with seismic mines, once you have one out. When, when you can drop another one, you can cause it to detonate. So if somebody's not going to fly into it, but they're in detonation range, you can detonate and damage somebody that way. It's yeah, kind of an advanced the, thing to do. Yeah, it's it's kind of an advanced tactic because, the, yeah, as soon as you drop a new one, the old one is detonated, so anybody who happens to be caught in the uh, blast radius gets uh, damage applied to them. I didn't mean to hit Hydra Spanner there. It's a completely wasted cooldown. Had a repair drone and repair probes from somebody in a Clarion, so I, I really didn't need it. Shifted to A right here because it was, I could see that it was being attacked, and I felt like they had B under control. Not that it mattered, because the game was over. The defense network is yours, thanks to 17 medals, fair amount of objective points. Can I just say how big of an effect simply having basic map awareness had on this game? Watch the map. That's the only reason we won. I was watching the map and they weren't. Yeah. And that's something that anybody can learn to do. You don't even have to be able to, like, shoot or have motor skills to watch the map. You just have to kind of be aware of what's going on. Both of the teams were locking horns at sea for a very, very long time. I stayed there longer than I should have. But you switched when you should have, after you died. So that you, you sort of made a death warp of sorts to A. Yeah. Uh, and it's just that one decision to say, okay, I'm not going to do what everybody else is doing. I'm pretty sure A is at most guarded only by one person. So I'm going to be aggressive. And that's something people should probably think about when they decide that, okay, I want to learn how to fly bombers. Don't be afraid to involve yourself in the fight and lead charges. There was the one initial capture on C that you led. You were the first person on the node dodging a gunship uh, along the way and then clearing the mines. And then the capture of A, you also led, capturing it basically by yourself. The main lesson of this match overall is don't just sit around, whether you're in a bomber or you're in a scout or whatever you're in, don't just sit around. Always be looking for ways that you can help improve your team's position.